The Washington Commanders have one of the biggest off-seasons in franchise history. With almost $90 million in cap space to go along with ample amount of draft picks, the Washington Commanders are poised for a massive off-season. So today, let's discuss my fantasy rebuild of the Washington Commanders. So in this video, we're going to be doing a re-sign period, an extension period, a restructuring period, and of course, free agency in the draft. Now, when considering the $91 million of cap space, we also have to consider the fact that there are going to be some new contracts going to these rookies. So we have to take away about $10 million which gives us $81 million in cap space. Now with the $81 million, we are going to begin with our re-sign period. Now in the re-sign period, I decided to go with players who are going to benefit us not only next year, but for the rather future. So the biggest re-signs I want to get out of the way are Cameron Curl and Kendall Fuller. Cameron Curl was a really good safety last year, a guy who was getting paid very little, but is now going to get paid a pretty hefty upgrade. His contract will be worth roughly about four years, $58 million, and I'm going to be giving him $12 million in his first year. Next is cornerback Kendall Fuller, who is is a bit of a controversial figure within the Washington Commanders fan base. Some people think he's a great corner, some think he's completely overrated. I kind of sit in the middle and think that he's a very good cornerback too, and just a decent cornerback one. But with that being said, the, the Commanders don't have that much stuff where they can fix every problem, and I just wouldn't want to create an even bigger hole in that cornerback position. So we're going to give him a three-year $40 million type of contract with $15 million of it going to him in his first year. We are also going to bring back Jacoby Brissett on a one-year $7 million deal. This will be basically a mentor to whoever the quarterback will be of the future. The last two players who I'm going to keep on this team are Cornelius Lucas and Kaliki Hudson. These are both guys who played a good amount of snaps this year and are going to be giving some really cheap contracts. Cornelius Lucas' contract will be two years $7 million, with the first year being $3 million, and if he doesn't perform this year, we're just going to go ahead and cut him next year. Kaliki Hudson will be a, a rotational linebacker for us. He's going to get a two-year $4 million deal, with $2 million of it going in his first year. So in that re-signing period, we gave up about $39 million. But with the $39 million, we are going to go ahead and restructure two big contracts, mainly Terry McLaurin and Jonathan Allen. Those contracts will get us to about $57 million per year, and that is going to conclude the restructure and resign period. Now let's move on to the extension period, and there's only really one player who I think they should give a long-term contract to, and that is going to be Samuel Cosme, the current right guard of the Washington Commanders. He's kind of rotated from playing the tackle position to now being at the guard, and while at the beginning of the year he wasn't playing his best, towards the back end as right guard, he played fantastic and I think of their five offensive linemen he's arguably their best and definitely a foundational piece for that offensive line. I'm going to give him a contract extension of about three years 28 to 30 million dollars per year. We're just going to go with the latter of that and give him 30 million per year on about a 10 million per year basis. That is now officially going to give us the total of $47 million heading into free agency. Now in the free agent market, there are a ton of needs the Washington Commanders need to look to address. The biggest need they need to look to address is the edge rusher position, the interior and exterior offensive line, a new cornerback one, and potentially a linebacker or two. Now I couldn't really fix the cornerback problem in the free agent market just because I don't see anybody out there who's going to be available and is also worth the contract. And one thing we do need to understand about how I am addressing the free agent market, I'm not just going to go out there and sign all the big name players like a Brian Burns or a Josh Allen. That just wouldn't make much sense and it's just extremely unrealistic. So rather, I went with guys who are at the higher end of their position but also worth a contract both for the short term and the long term. One thing we have to understand about this commander's team is they're not just going to go out there and hand out massive contracts for no reason and nor should they. This is a team that is going to be set for the future so you might as well get guys who are on the younger side who can play on your team and be foundational pieces for your team for the next several years. And whoever may be the veteran addition to this team is only going to be brought in on a short-term deal, you don't really want to keep veterans around on massive deals. An example of this would be like bringing in Tyron Smith, the offensive tackle from Dallas, on a massive deal. That just wouldn't make a ton of sense because he's not going to be a part of our long-term future. So with that being said, let's begin by talking about my number one and my biggest addition of the offseason, Jonah Jackson, the offensive guard for the Detroit Lions. Now, Jonah Jackson was a foundational part of the Detroit Lions offensive line, which was one of the best in the entire NFL. Jonah Jackson does have a couple injury concerns, but I'm not too concerned about that. The left guard is arguably the worst position on this commander's team, so bringing in a guy like Jonah Jackson would completely flip that position by itself. Now, he won't be cheap, but I'm also going to give him a contract that I think he's completely worth. I would give him a contract of about four years, $44 million per year, and I would also front load the contract so that on the back end, it does get even better for them. So in the first year, I'm going to give him $15 million, and we'll worry about the back end stuff a bit later. Keeping with the offensive line here, we are now going to sign a new center. As it sits right now, Nick Gates is the starter, and he's just, well, okay. He's nothing fantastic, but he's definitely 
definitely not good. So for the center position, I decided to bring in John Feliciano on a two year, $10 million per year with about a 5 million year per basis. John Feliciano is a bit of a veteran guy who's been around on many different teams. Last year, he spent it with the San Francisco 49ers and well, we all know how that went for him. He made it to a Super Bowl and even though they fell short, he had a freaking good year. Now, John Feliciano is not only gonna fill in at the center position, but he can also fill in at the guard position if necessary. Now, in this situation, you already have Jonah Jackson and Sam Cosme, so he will play the center position for us and he's gonna be worth the contract. He's a decent center who isn't gonna break the bank. And for a team like Washington, fixing that center position has gotta be a top priority for them. I like this addition a lot for them. That is it for the offensive line and honestly, the entire offense in general. I could have brought in a new wide receiver at the end of the day. It does appear like Curtis Samuel will be leaving, but I do believe in other guys in this roster to fill in for that spot and who knows, maybe they could take a receiver in the draft. So again, I'm not gonna prioritize bringing him back. I think that's a bit of an interesting one, but you could potentially find one in free agency for relatively cheap. If there is a possibility that Curtis Samuel does leave and you are looking for a potential replacement, I think some good guys to look at would be a guy like Josh Reynolds. He's relatively cheap and also has been pretty productive. I would like that addition, but he won't be a part of this video, but I am just kind of throwing that in there just in case you are concerned about the wide receiver position. But now let's move on to the defense and the number one thing they need to look to address is the edge rusher position. Because once they traded Chase Young and Montez Sweat, they had no pass rushers on this team that weren't from Jonathan Allen or Deron Payne. Their two starters were basically James Smith-Williams and Casey Tuhill, and sometimes KJ Henry and Joshua Pryor would get some snaps as well. But of those guys, none of them were extremely impressive. I do think that KJ Henry has a bit of potential, so I'm willing to keep him on the roster and kind of build around him as a rotational piece. But if one of those guys is a starter next year, that is a bit concerning for this team. So to replace those guys, I brought in two really good pass rushers who are not going to break the bank. We are going to start off with Bryce Huff on a four-year $35 million per year basis. I'm going to guarantee him $8 million in his first year. Now, Bryce Huff is just an all-around really good player. He's very active in the pass rush, and he also has very good hustle. He's one of those guys who's not going to stop running after a player makes a big play. He's going to continue to run and continue to make plays. In New York, he wasn't necessarily a full-time starter. He only played, I want to say, 40 to 50% of the snaps in the New York Jets, but regardless of that, he was still uber productive for them. And with Dan Quinn liking to have a nice rotation of pass rushers, I definitely do think bringing him in and also having a guy like KJ Henry get some rotational minutes too will definitely be what kind of happens. So for Bryce Huff, I do think he'll end up being a starter and I do think he'll play a lot more snaps than he did in New York, but I also think that Dan Quinn will continue the rotation thing going. But it's hard for Bryce Huff to be productive if he doesn't have a good pass rushing mate. So with that being said, we are going to bring in Dorrance Armstrong on a three-year $27 million per year basis with $9 million of it going to him in his first year. Now, if you watched my Carolina video, you would know that I also had Dorrance Armstrong going to Carolina. He's just one of those guys who I think I'll basically have him going to every single team because he's just all around very good in run support, very good as a pass rusher, and just uber productive for a cheap price. This is a guy who you can basically lock in at 8 to 11 sacks per year, and it's just going to be super dominant whenever he's out there. The nice thing about Dorrance Armstrong for this commander's team is I still think there's a second gear to how good he can be. Now, he's been in the league for a while, but he's been behind guys like Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. But when those guys aren't making plays, Dorrance Armstrong is typically the guy who can make the big plays as well. Dorrance Armstrong, like I said, is really good in run support and very good as a pass rusher. And I think long term, he would fit in super nicely in Dan Quinn's system, obviously, and Washington. So for the commanders, Dorrance Armstrong should be a top priority for them, as it should be for a lot of different teams. The last player that I'm going to try to bring in for the Washington Commanders is going to be a new all-around good linebacker, and that is going to be Josie Jewell, the Denver Broncos linebacker. He's going to get a cheaper deal worth about two years, 12 to 12 and a half per year. That puts him about six million per year, and while he may not be great at one thing, he is just very solid at a bit of everything. And with this team losing a lot of their production in the linebacking room, you're definitely going to need to get a guy who can do a bit of everything. Now, Jamin Davis is one of those young linebackers who's proving to be pretty decent. And while I also mentioned earlier that we're going to be keeping Kaliki Hudson, you could have Josie Jewell be that third option if you decide to stick to that 4-3. Now, traditionally, Dan Quinn doesn't really keep three linebackers out there. He typically will go with a four-pass rush unit to go along with just two linebackers. Essentially, he likes to run a lot of nickel with a lot more secondary members. So a guy like Josie Jewell, who's very much a Dan Quinn-style linebacker, would be a very good fit. Josie Jewell is fast, he's good in coverage, he's very lengthy, a lot of what you've seen from Dallas over the past couple years. So I think he'll fit in very nicely in Dan Quinn's system as somebody who can create turnovers and just be very solid. So with that being said, I didn't spend every single dime they had this offseason. I brought in five guys who I thought could be productive for them next year, but also a lot of them for the next several years. Guys like Jonah Jackson, Bryce Huff, and Dorrance Armstrong will be 
cornerstones for this team moving forward and they didn't break the bank these are guys who long term aren't going to be killing this team with their finances moving forward that was really important to me and i'd imagine that washington is definitely having those priorities this offseason but with that being said let's now get to the funnest part of the video the draft now i only did the first three rounds because there's no reason to really go from the fourth and back because those are super unpredictable picks usually and with that being said the commanders have five picks of the first 101 overall picks of the draft which means they can essentially get five top 100 players so with that being said with the number two overall pick they're going to be taking drake may now i don't personally care who the quarterback is whether it's caleb williams or drake may i personally tend to believe that drake may is a better fit in washington so we're just going to say drake may but if it's caleb williams then so be it drake may has justin herbert josh allen upside and can be that true cornerstone quarterback this team has needed for quite some time side note here i probably should have mentioned this earlier i would likely be trained Sam Howell in this situation. Now, what you could get for him is still up in the air. I've heard rumors of potentially a third or fourth round pick. I tend to think fourth round is a bit more realistic. Now, if you want to know what team I think Sam Howell would be a good fit on, check the video right now. I'll give you a hint. It's a very historical team. But now let's move on to the number 36 pick in this draft. And I'm going to be taking a new tight end in Jatavion Sanders, the Texas tight end. Now, in recent news, Logan Thomas was just cut by the Washington Commanders as of when I'm making this video. So you're going to need to find a replacement. And what better way to fill in that spot than with an upside player like Jatavion Sanders who can fit in nicely next to Drake May. One thing that I've realized over the past couple years is if you want to win a championship, you might need to have a good tight end. Look at the Chiefs. Look at the Niners. Hell, look at the Ravens. I know they haven't won it, but you get my point. So getting a guy like Jatavion Sanders who has a ton of upside is really smart in my opinion. Now, is he the best run blocker? No, but he is uber productive when it comes to his pass catching ability. And I think he could be a guy who could easily at some point have a thousand yard season. Next up, we're going to be taking an offensive tackle at the number 40th overall pick. I'm going to be taking Kingsley, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced this last name, Sui Maitai. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name. The six foot four, 329 linebacker from BYU. This is a guy who was just all around very impressive. He's freakishly athletic, as well as having extremely high production when he was in college. This is a guy who you compare, who you could compare to a guy like Troy Fatanu or Jordan Morgan. And taking him with the number 40 overall pick to me feels like a bit of a steal. Almost every other draft where it's not as stacked as this one, this is a guy who could potentially be ranked as a top seven offensive tackle. But because there's so many freaking good offensive tackles in this draft, you're going to find him more as that 10th or 11th best tackle. But again, that's just mainly due to the fact that there's so many freaking good tackles in this year's draft. Now, ideally, I would prefer to get a guy like a Graham Barton or Jordan Morgan because they have a bit more versatility whereas Kingsley I think will stick to that tackle spot but I but in this situation with when I did my mock draft he was the only tackle who was available who I think would fit nicely with the Washington Commanders Kingsley is a guy who I don't suspect will start in his rookie year but I think as time goes on and if he impresses could definitely be the future starter next up with the pick number 67 I decided to go a little bit different here this team could really use a safety to go along with Cameron Curl so I went with ironically Cameron Kitchens the Miami safety now Cameron Kitchens this is one of those guys who has the ability to lock down down a sideline all by himself. He makes big hits, he's physical in coverage, and while he may struggle a little bit with his athleticism at times and sometimes can take wrong angles, I definitely do think if trained properly could be a incredible fit in the Dan Quinn system. Gotta remember, Dan Quinn has turned guys like Malik Hooker and Donovan Wilson and Jerron Curse and turned them into really freaking good safeties. So despite the fact that Cameron Kitchens may not have the highest upside when it comes to his athleticism, I do think all around he could be a very good zone slash nickel safety in this league and the last pick of this draft with pick number 101 i decided to go with cam hart the notre dame cornerback now this is a guy who's traditionally more of an outside press man coverage corner who isn't freakishly athletic. I believe today he ran about a 4-5 at the draft combine. And while in college, sometimes he did struggle a tad bit with his fundamentals as well as getting a good number of flags, he does have very good upside to be a very good coverage corner. There's a lot of things he needs to work on, but the number one thing that I'm not concerned with this guy is he's very physical. He can shed defenders, he can get off blocks, and he can make big tackles. So if you're looking for a guy who can stuff the run in that cornerback spot, he's definitely your guy. I, the coverage stuff will need some work, but given the fact that Dan Quinn has been able to turn guys like Deron Bland and Trevon Diggs into all pro level corners, I think he could probably do some work on this guy as well. So with that being said, that is my full rebuild of the Washington Commanders. We addressed the edge rusher, the linebacker, the cornerback, the quarterback, the tight end. The only thing we didn't really address in this fantasy rebuild was the wide receiver position. But again, you could probably go out there and get a Josh Reynolds to fill in a spot. So if you guys enjoy, let me know in the comment section below. And if I made a mistake anywhere, please let me know in the comments below. I'll make sure to respond to you. But I love you guys. Peace.